Today we're gonna learn how to keep that from happening and four other stupid guitar tricks that you may not know yet. And welcome to Music with Marky. So the old stepping on the cable and pulling it out while you're playing trick. That happens live and you really feel stupid. But luckily there's a simple fix and that's trick number one. Take your cable, you run it through the strap here, and then you plug it in. Stupid simple, but you wouldn't believe how many times I forgot to do that on stage and yanked the cable out. Not good. Do you like to let out your inner Eddie Van Halen, but you're only really comfortable tapping with your index finger? Well, what are you supposed to do with this pick? No, that's not it. Well, I've got this stupid simple trick where I just take it from here between my thumb and my index finger, I move it to my middle finger, and grab it in between like that, almost like a magic trick. And then when I'm done, just move it back out, slide it back into position, and I'm ready to go. Before I move on to tip number three, I'd just like to ask you to do me the biggest favor of all and click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for lots more stuff like this and gear reviews and all that kind of stuff. It really helps me out. Thanks. Have you ever had a guitar that no matter how in tune the tuner says it is, that when you start moving up the neck and playing chords, it just sounds awful? Well, this probably means your intonation is off, and that means the guitar needs a little bit of work because it's going to be off as you move up the neck and it goes out of tune. The A note open and the A note an octave higher aren't exactly an octave apart the way the neck is right now. But if you're at a gig or playing at a friend's house or something, you can't just repair this thing really quickly, and you need to find a way to tune it so that it's going to sound good or as good as it can anywhere you play. And here's what I like to do, something called the, what I call the median tuning trick. So here I'm going to play fifths on the B and E string, seventh and ninth fret respectively. And then I'm playing fifths all the way up. It's all the seventh and ninth fret except for when I'm on the B and G strings, which is the seventh and tenth fret. Seventh on the G, tenth on the B. So something like this, you can do octaves too, and you can do it on the fifth fret, whatever works best. So this way, when you get it in tune on the fifth or maybe seventh fret, the distance you go where it's out of tune is only a few frets in either direction, and you're kind of in the median, in the middle of the tuning, and you can get away with it in a pinch. Now let's go back to something for live playing, and then we're finally going to talk about what that little guitar is about. Do you find that your sound is getting lost when you're playing live, and so you walk over to your amp and you turn it up a little, and then your bass player walks over to his and turns it up a little, then you turn yours up a little, and then the next thing you know, everything's just noise. If this is happening, volume is likely not your problem, it's your choice of sound or EQ, how you're shaping the sound. And the problem is that sounds that work in a room when you're playing by yourself or in a small rehearsal space are different than what works in a very large room or with a crowd around and the different kind of noise you have in a club setting. And most likely the problem is that you're EQ'd way too bass and low mid heavy and it's making mud of your sound. You're not cutting through what is essentially a live mix. So if you want to fix this, you want to take everything up to about 500 megahertz, M hertz. I don't know, I'm not a technician, and roll it back a little bit, the bass and low mids, and you wanna bring up from 1K to 2K in that mid range and pull that up a couple dBs. Now, if you don't have uh, an EQ pedal, I certainly suggest you get one, but then you can just pull the bass knob back on an amp and pull the mids up a little bit. That should take care of it. Don't just do it with treble because it's gonna get really grating sounding and sharp to people's ears, and that's not what you're looking for. Okay, and now for the final trick, and I have to give credit to my buddy Roger Rocks for this one, and that is, what is the little guitar about? And it's just a little trick to help you remember notes when you're working high up on the neck above the 12th fret. And basically what it is, is that you have two guitars almost. You have the big guitar from zero up to 11, and then at 12, it's got two dots or a logo maybe, and that's kind of because it's a repeat of the open strings. You have the E, A, D, etc., and that's the same thing over here, and the whole guitar starts over again. So from here to here, it's the little guitar. From here to here, it's the big guitar. So you just have to subtract 12. From playing, say, the 15th fret on the E string, I subtract 12 from 15, get three, and it's the note G. That's how you can figure out what those notes are more quickly by thinking of it as the small guitar. So I hope you found these little stupid tricks and tips useful. If you have any of your own, please share them below or any comments or questions, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, guys, keep making great music. 
Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.